try to record. Okay. Okay, uh, so today, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning. So we will continue our lecture. I don't think today is going to be very long uh, because uh, today we kind of, we will start a new, basically a new topic. Um, previously on chapter 1 to 6, those are all combinational logic whereby you don't have any clock to the system. The minute you get the input, you is instantly you get the output. That's how uh, the function of the circuit, right? So now, uh, that is why uh, in the previous one, uh, propagation delay is kind of important because that is actually the, the, the cause of the delay, right? So now, starting chapter 7 onwards, we are going to start with finite state machine or sequential logic system, okay? So chapter 7 will be introduction to sequential logic. So this chapter is actually a revision from your digital electronics. Yeah. So let's start. So basically, I'm going to go through very quite very fast, I think, because uh, it is um, revision. Unless you ask me, eh, if you forgot. So as an introduction, now uh, going back to digital digital circuits, eh, digital circuits. So you can divide digital circuit into two parts. Eh? One is the combinational logic, which we have covered before, up to arithmetic circuit, right? Multiplexer decoders, uh, arithmetic circuits. Uh, ROM is also in category of, sorry, ROM. Uh, we put it in combinational logic, but actually it can be sequential. And we also now starting with the sequential circuit. And if you remember, sequential circuit has two type of sequential one is category as asynchronous which means the clock is not really the triggering factor whereas the the other one is synchronous so our focus will be on synchronous okay now uh, so combinational logic output present output depends on the present input and doesn't have memory to keep whatever the state of the output Sequential, however, the output not only depend on the present input, but also depend on the past input or the state. Eh? And it uses memory. In order to remember the past input, it has to have memory. And, and it has to have a clock, either synchronous or not synchronous. Eh? So, comparison between asynchronous and synchronous. So for the asynchronous, you have a combinational logic, memory, input, and output. So the clock is not that very clear because clock is, actually there is a clock, but um, it doesn't trigger every memory element. Eh? So it doesn't uh, put it here. Whereas for synchronous, clock is like a default input. So sometimes you don't call the clock as input, but it, it has to be there, right? And it will synchronize the memory. So if it's like 10 bits memory, all will be synchronized using the same clock. You have input and output. So before you only study the top box, now we combine with the memory elements. So for today, we only focus on the memory elements. And then uh, maybe on Wednesday, we'll start doing register, which is one application when you combine the memory and the combinational logic. So, First of all, because clock is the is the component that synchronizes the whole thing, that makes everything changes, right? Uh, so clock, basically, uh, if you recall, clock is actually just square pulses, square pulses. So it has a clock period, and it has a clock width or pulse width. And then the more the most important thing now, not only the clock period. But you have the rising age. Rising age is when the clock is transitioned from zero to high, and the following e falling age is when the clock transition from high to low. Okay. Now uh, the simplest form or the starting uh, introduction or design of uh, of the memory system is called bistable circuit. Now this is a simple one, but now now you don't use it as a flip flop. This is not a flip flop. This is a latch, because it doesn't depend on clock yet. But it has 
memory somehow. Eh? So by stable, you have the R. R stands for reset, S for set. And then the Q and Q bar. When it's called by stable, meaning it has two stable states, either 0 or 1. Yeah? Clock is not stable. Clock is R stable, A stable, meaning it always continuing 0, 1, 0, 1 all together, all the time. Uh, so by stable, you either have 0 or 1. So in binary system, Q, if Q is 0, Q bar has to be 1. If Q is 1, Q bar has to be 1. So R is for reset. So the function of reset is to make Q, our reference is always Q, to make Q equal 0. However, if set is trigger, the set function S is to make Q to become 1. Okay, we never change that. Okay, so for example, <coughs> sorry. So you can have a functional table here. SR, so I don't go into detail much. SR, so here you don't have bubble, but for the Q bar, normally you have the bubble. Uh, you, you may also have the over bar and the bubble. Don't worry about that. That means this is normal Q. This is the complement of the Q. So if S is 0, R is 0, meaning neither set nor reset is activate. Therefore, Q plus is your next state. Eh? So your next value of Q will be the same as the previous Q. So next state is still equal to present state. Same as for your Q bar. Therefore, the action or the function will say no change to the status. However, if the reset R is 1, that means Q plus the next state will be reset. It means it will become 0. Okay? And obviously, Q bar, prime, uh, Q bar plus will be 1. That is the reset. And if the set is activated, then Q plus or the next state will be 1. And the Q bar has to be 0. However, if you turn on the set and reset, it's like you're trying to activate both. Set is to tell, to give Q0, 1. Reset is to give Q1. So that is actually contradict to each other. Therefore, this status is called forbidden. I mean, you should not let S equal R equal 1. Yeah, because what happened, you got 0, 0. So therefore, normally when we design, we say X. X are invalid because that is a status where you should not use. Uh, this is the example of how it works. Now, the good thing about the SR, I mean, the most application of it is that when you have jittering input, like in your third milestone, if you implement on hardware, your input is from switch. Remember when you put a dime or a nickel. So the switch itself, when you press, sometimes it doesn't give you a solid one or a solid zero. It will have like one and then another one, another one before it's stable. Similarly, when it, go, it, when it goes to zero, sometimes it takes time to go to zero. So what happened is that here, uh, if your set is one and your reset is zero, Q become one. And as long as your reset is zero, it will only read the first set. The rest is ignored as long as the R is zero. Why? Because uh zero zero no change meaning the current one is maintained set is one remain one and then zero zero no change so remain one okay okay uh okay similarly here when the set now is zero the r it depends on the r now It depends on the R now. See, if the S is 0, look at the R. Okay. So, the first R is 1. That's why you got here 1. Eh, sorry, you got the 0 here. Because this one to say reset. But the next 1 and 1 will not change the output because your S is remain 0. So, that means you have 0, 0, 1, 0, reset. Reset, zero, zero, no change, one, zero, reset, zero, zero, no change. And then on the next one, the set again. So the output is set. Set, yeah? But however, if both is zero and zero, remember? Uh, no, no, no. 
this is not the issue here. The issue is here. When the set and reset is 1, actually what happened is that you got 0, 0 from the action table. Right, from the previous table. But when you have 0, 0 after that, which is a no change criteria, you get something unknown because this is invalid. Invalid. Why is it invalid? Because in digital, you cannot have Q and Q bar to be the same value. So you cannot. That's not allowed. That is, uh, if you have a law, you get, go against the law. Okay? <laughs> right. Next. Uh. Okay, this is an active low, active low uh, latch, whereby now if you look at it, the forbidden is when S and R is 0, 0. This is forbidden. I mean, you should not allow this, um, this condition, this input condition. Mm. Okay, right. So, okay. So for the NAND, uh, for the NAND gate, you have uh, what? See, you if you look at it, if the set is zero, if your set is zero, the output is set. The output is set. However, if the reset is zero, the output is reset. But if you want one, mean no change. Because this one is active low. Okay? This one is active low. Yeah, I think we have lagging again. I cannot erase the screen. Uh, properly, yeah. Okay. So now, if you lose active, if you look at the active low, what happened? Uh, when S is uh, okay, this is a latch with enable. Actually, this is latch with enable. Okay, with this enable. Okay, so what happened is that the enable doesn't have bubble, meaning uh, it has to be high in order for the set reset to function. So as long as enable is zero, meaning the whole uh, latch is disabled. Disabled meaning regardless of the x and x, uh, the s and the r, q will the q plus next uh, state will not change the value. Uh, then, then only it goes back to the normal one. Zero, zero, no change. Zero, one, reset. Uh, one, zero, is set. So it depends on here, here eh, the value of the S and R. So if like if you notice, if you get something S, R, again, the one, this is active one, must be for the, if the S is one, the output is set. If the R is one, but this one is not, then it becomes reset. Eh? And again, one one is forbidden. So this enable is actually like synchronized. Like let's say if you take time to set the S and R, so keep the enable to be zero first. Then uh, you change the S R. Once the stable the S R, then only you put the enable and you get the output. Okay, that is kind of the function lah. Right. Okay, next. This is another timing diagram. What do you see? Now, if you look at this, uh, your this one, if we refer to the same SR, uh, enable 
here is the the one that working is here. This one here. And during here, this two. Okay. And this one. So S is one here. We'll change the value of here to be one. Okay, S1. Here is one. And then uh, S0, but because R is zero, so no change. So basically, here the second one is no change. Then here is zero, one. Now you uh, reset. But uh, but this reset will not uh will not function because of the zero. So nothing happened here. Actually, this is also no change. But no change here is because of this zero. No change here is because of this zero and zero. Okay. Now zero one. So that means um at first you no change. But then uh, one here will set, so that means uh, this is a new, a fresh one. Now no change from here to here should not be any, nothing should be happen at the output because of disable, right? And from here to here now on, so this is zero one, you reset. So that's why you got a reset. Okay. Uh, this is again uh, actually uh, what you did before, right? Because I'm teaching digital electronics at the same time, so I remember this thing. Uh, right, but you may forgot. Now, D flip flop or D latch. Here is actually still D latch because the difference between latch and flip flop is clock. If you have level triggered like this, level trigger meaning your enable, your output change. Huh? Ah, yeah. Okay, the enable here is active high. That means level, level trigger. Okay, level trigger. Level trigger. So this is why it is a latch. Okay, so D flip flop is simple. This is sometimes called delay or data d can be uh, d can means delay d can also means data because if you notice your q is always follow d if d is zero the next q is zero if d is one the next q is one providing enable so it's like this data is transferred to the output providing enable okay Okay, <clears throat> uh, this is another one, Q, Q plus D, Q plus equal to D, if you look at it. Enable, so when enable is zero, actually D will not, appear, will not <coughs> change the value of Q. However, as long as D is one, the output here, the output here, the same. Right, here and here the same. This one, regardless of the changes at the output, the sorry, regardless of the changes at the input, because of disable, the output remain. Okay? But now, if your enable is high, any changes at D will appear the same as the output. And now, again, no change because of zero. Okay, that's how you do it. Now, D flip flop. You have to remember D flip flop because for our digital system, we will focus on only D flip flop. Actually, I can just keep the rest if I like. Um, okay, I can't get the eraser to work. When I can't get it, I have to go to annotate and there. 
Right. So D flip flop, the difference is here. The triangle shows that it is a clock and it is a positive age triggered. Remember just now your clock has rising age and falling age. So the positive age is actually the uh, rising age. So like the clock is when during this time. Okay. So when the clock is zero or one on level, nothing happened. The Q, no change. And when clock is also one, also no change. But on the exactly at the spot of the rising age, when D is zero, Q is zero, D is one, is one. Okay, the next step. So reset and set. Okay, but you don't really say reset and set for D flip flop, more like the data. When your data is zero, your Q plus next is zero after receiving the age or the clock. And if your data is one, next when you see the clock, it become one. Okay. Okay. This one is flip flop versus latch. Now you have flip flop versus latch. What happened is that if you look at the first one, this is a latch, although labeled as clock, but when there's no triangle, yeah, no triangle shape here, meaning this is a latch. When there's a triangle here, this is a positive edge, and this is a negative edge. When you have a bubble, when you have a bubble, So the first one is a latch. This one is positive edge triggered and this is a negative edge. Can you see how the output looks? Why the output looks like this? Now I am okay. So let me use a pencil. Now for the first for the QA, if you look at it, this, this is a latch. This is a latch. Therefore, the output will change here. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. For as long as it is 1, they will, the changes will take, uh, taking, uh, it will take the, whatever the changes. Similarly here, one so zero zero one one but when it's zero although the changes here but the output remain zero similarly here the, there is a changes at your data but the output is just no change you keep whatever the value here keep here so remember the time as if we're going this way eh? so this if this is time zero this is your time eh? that means this is your present state next state present state next state so for the QB, this is a positive A triggered, meaning it only occur, changes can only be one and two, only twice. That's why you see, because D is one, it goes one here. From here, this one, it goes one. And here, because of this zero, then it goes zero. Only twice the changes. Whereas for the third one, this is a negative triggered therefore it only triggered here and the changes only occur here however during that time your q is zero so zero remains zero and another changes occur here now your d is one only then your changes so actually indirectly when you use uh h triggered somehow it'll be easier to control the output compared to H trigger. Uh, sorry, compared to level trigger. So latch is level trigger. Okay. However, these two flip flop are H. H trigger. Yeah. So because H triggered only one or one, only two times the clock has positive H, or for the QC, only two times. It has the first age trigger. Okay. 
um, and then JK flip flop. Actually, I don't really want to go very much. Just a little bit uh, revision. Uh, are you? Do you still remember about JK flip flop? So then, you remember JK flip flop? Where are you, Adam? Aiman, Aidil, Adelina, little bit, doctor. Little bit, you forgot already. Aish, how come you forgot? Okay, this is towards the end of your digital electronics, right? Now, JK, JK is actually nothing but SR, yeah, SR free flop that has been better. Yeah? How is it better? Uh, this is exactly, if you remember, this is like the S and this is the R. However, the better part about JK is now you don't have the forbidden. If it's 1, 1, say, 0, 0, no change, 0, 1, reset, 1, 0, set. Now, when JK is 1, 1, toggle. So this is the additional features. So JK is actually the most universal flip flop. It has all the four features. No change. No change is good for memory. Right? You hold data. Reset is when you change data to zero. Set is to change data to one. And toggle is to complement. Let's say if the present value is zero, uh, once the clock coming, it becomes one. If the present value is one, uh, next clock, it becomes zero. Okay? Now, let's see how it works. Uh, T flip flop on the other hand is T stand for toggle. Now let me try to clear the screen. Not allowed. This is when we go live. Uh -huh. So T flip flop T here stand for either toggle. Sometimes we say for toggle like this, or sometimes it says triggering. Eh? toggle or triggering. So what happened is that when you supply logic one again. Uh, this is positive edge triggered, so you don't look at this one. Look at this one only. If your T is zero, data is basically stall. Just stay, no change. However, if your T is one, it will toggle or complement it. Okay. And do we have example? We don't have example somehow. Um, I think you have exercise. Now, three stop timing. Now, this is quite important when you, especially when you do your milestone, your milestone project. In your milestone project, you always have to supply input. So, and you have clock. You want to know when is the best time or the right time to put clock at data and how long you want to keep the data. So, this is the rules. Eh? So, input signal to feedback must be a two timing parameter before the, the signal is considered valid. So how is it? If this is a clock, prior to the clock trigger, this is considered a positive edge trigger. Okay. Uh, prior to the clock activate, you have to have your data set up. I need data already coming in before the triggering part. And at the after, at the triggering part, you also have to hold data for a while. That means don't change your data for between this time. Your data has to be between this uh, time. Once let's say you go up. This is to be setting up from here to here. And then from here to here, like you have to hold the data. Then only you got valid output. Yeah. So basically, uh, what is T0? Uh, uh, clock output, I think. Let's see. Uh, I, I missed the one page. Ah, here. Set up time, minimum time required, hold time and clock output to time, the clock to output delay time, the minimum time after a clock age to obtain a valid output. Actually, the critical one is TSU and TH. So that's why if you have clock, let's say if it's, um, how do you get it? Eh? Um, this is the, the sample problem. Sample problem, your data is changing. That means here. This symbol, like this, meaning your data is not stable. 
it will be it can be zero or one from 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 here to here as if data is still not stable and then the clock coming in when the clock coming in and the data is still not stable then you violate you did not kind of you did not set up properly your data so it says the output goes into meta state meta state meaning it may be zero it may be it may taking the data from before it may take data from after like sometimes it works as you plan sometimes it doesn't work as you plan right so you have to be careful on that okay, okay this is another another problems with uh, asynchronous for example uh, this is for example in your lab you have to do pedestrian crossing pedestrian crossing and this button this button doesn't have clock it doesn't uh, be in here like it, it is asynchronous with the, the whole traffic light uh, circuit so when you press or uh, maybe it has a clock but it doesn't synchronize with the input when you press at any time sometime uh, you did not follow because this is human human pressing it and it doesn't know when to set up when to hold you simply press right so you may have problem there when you transmit the data so how you come what happened is that this is a stable state this is stable zero stable one but you are doing something in between here so it can go it can roll back to zero or it can follow to one right so therefore the solution usually you delay you have an asynchronous input from switches which is not stable you you put in the input so this d will catch the first one when the clock coming will catch the first uh, input and it will stay there and delay further so when it comes to the system actually whatever that it catch first rather than the, the toggle the changing zero one it will go to the system this is like a delaying delaying to two o'clock before you read the actual and this data coming so this one is like jittering input here will be a clean input yeah so the single system will detect only clean input so when it detect clean input therefore it will it will be more stable okay uh, this is the operation mm. now when you do this under the sequential part if you remember in the combinational part sometimes you need to analyze the system what is your analysis? What do you mean by analyze? Are you here? Hmm? Daniel? Felix? Who else is here? Still 43 only, eh? We have to be 65. There's a lot not here. I think the, those who are not here are the ones who are always not here. Even in the normal class also, we seldom have all right hmm. all right so the you use the characteristic table that means if you have the d d input then you get you can see what happened to the q plus remember for the d flip flop your q plus is equal to d or your output is equal to the input right so if your input is zero your output will be zero after the clock and if d is one the output is one so this one is useful when you are analyzing or when you want to um you want to investigate behavior of a given circuit you are given a circuit then you want to see how it works it means normally you are given a circuit you have to come up with a state diagram to define to get the behavior of the circuit on the other hand you have something called a citation table a citation means you rather than you want to see how it works uh, you want to come up with the circuit that have this kind of behavior so that means what given to you is present state and next state and you have to decide what are the input required in order to get that kind of transition for example if your input is zero your present state is zero and then when clock coming your output is still zero obviously your d has to be zero if your current state is zero but when clock coming it become one obviously your d has to be one because this if you q plus equal to d d is also equal to q plus 
So similarly, if 1, 0, meaning your current state is 1, but your next state is 0, obviously your D has to be 0. Because this D is 0 that bring the reset. However, if your Q is 1, it goes to 1, meaning no change in behavior, therefore the D is 1. Okay? And then from there, you say Q0 is 0. Now, when this is state diagram, from this excitation table, actually you can come up with a state diagram. What happens is that when Q is 0, is 1, eh? And Q is 0, and Q is, why am I always having the, I don't get the, and, Here, when Q is 0, I don't get the pen. I don't know why. Let me try to annotate again. Play around this stuff. Ah, now I got the pen. Now, if this is 0, so starting from here, and Q is 0. If D is 0, it will go back to itself. If D is 1, the Q will be 1. And if from the state of Q, it is 1. If D is 1, it will maintain. It will maintain one, so it stay it going back to itself. However, if D is zero, it will go back to this one. So this line and this line are called transition. The round thing is the state. The bullet ni is the state. Ini is the transition, and D is your input. So if you have one input, there should be two possibility of moving to the other side, or to go back. I mean, from this present state. If D is 1, what happened? If D is 0, what happened? If from this state, if D is 0, what happened? If D is 1, what happened? You have to complete. Yeah? So this is how we come up with the state diagram. The state diagram is actually the best or the easier one because naturally our tendency is we figure out better from diagram rather than from table or writing or numbers. Yeah? I'll just follow those procedure. Okay, yeah, so D flip flop, and I think, let's see how many slides we have, how many slides we have. Okay, T flip flop, I can just focus, this is characteristic, T0, Q, T1, Q bar, we mentioned again. So this is the excitation table, actually this is the new part when you design. Remember, our class is designed, but fortunately, for digital system, our focus is only D flip flop. But just for the sake of uh, like design, if you are given this uh, state diagram, design usually you come up with the state diagram from the state. Actually, the process. Let me see. If when you do when you do analysis from circuit, you come up with the characteristic table right and then from the characteristic table you get the state diagram to describe the behavior however if you design from state diagram you go to transition and from this citation table you come up with the equation here you come up with the equation and from the equation how do i do it from this one, you go to this one. Once you get this one, you can get the equation for Q plus or for the equation for T, sorry. No, this is wrong equation. This is characteristic equation. No, this is not the equation. Uh, can I do that? Uh -huh. From here, you get the equation for T. And once you get the equation for T, you come up with the circuit. So this is the design. This is from here to here is analysis, from here to here is design process. Your class will be emphasized P05, mostly on design. So you have to be able to work out from state diagram. For example, here, when you start from, because you only have one bit, Q, only Q, one bit, therefore your state is either two state, zero or one only, right? So zero, if your T is zero, you go back to itself. If T is one, obviously it will complement. So zero become one. So if you are in the one state, if T is zero, I mean you know change, so you put, you return back to itself. However, if T is one, it will be complement, meaning Q one become Q zero. It go back to so here. Yeah, that's how you come up with the state uh, diagram.
But in design, normally it could be also from problem. That means a, a statement. You have a problem. And then from the problem, you go to the state diagram. State diagram go to excitation. Excitation go to equation. Equation go to the kit. That is the process. Okay. Okay, this is JK flip flop. JK, that's a lot. Actually, this wire here got two wire. One is when zero zero, one is when zero one. Uh, here is also when is zero zero and one zero. So you don't have to show the two wires or two line, two transition. You can just say zero zero or zero one. But actually, uh, if you look at this one, the K is always zero. Only the J either zero or one. That's five. Uh, for example, here when Q is starting from one here, you're looking at from one. Uh, if the J, regardless of the value of J, as long as K is zero, you always go to the one. For one, it will remain one. This one could be because of zero zero, which means no change. It could be also because of one zero, which is set. That's why you put don't care here. Don't care here meaning. You can take either 0 or 1. As long as the k is 0, you always have a 1 going to 1. Similarly, from 0 going What's up? What's up? What's up? Oh. Sorry for the interruption. I, my daughter is still asking me. All right. Uh, JK flip flop. That's what work from home. Interruption. Anyway. Uh, JK flip flop. They have to get this one. And then the SR flip flop. You have that. But you have to make sure SR equal to 1 is not allowed yeah, for the SR flip flop. And then this is the summary of the table. Uh, this is summary of the excitation table. So I think you just focus for D. And in fact, later on, in fact, in your milestone, I think you should ask me, or somebody, asking me which flip-flop you want to use. So for all your milestone project, just use D flip-flop. We're not going to use SR, JK, or T. But actually, if you use JK flip-flop, you will, you, there is a big tendency that you will come up with a simpler circuit. However, the method will be longer because if you use D flip flop, you only have to get equation for D. However, if you use JK flip flop, you need to get equation for J and for the K. So there's, there's a lot more to do. Yeah? T flip flop, you don't use much. So actually, our focus, our focus is only on D. And because of D flip flop, D is always equal to Q plus. So sometimes, um, if you notice in your milestone or in your exercise, they don't need, they don't emphasize the D. They just get the present and the next state because Q plus is always equal to D. So indirectly, when you get the equation for Q plus, you are getting the equation for D eh? because of the, uh, the the nature of it. Eh? This is what uh example. Okay. Uh, this is what I did uh, in the example before, actually. Now, this is the way I, because some of you are asking me how to do annotation. This is how I'm doing the annotation, right? Look at it. Uh, a is, remember, the, the A figure. I make time to highlight, to point out, and to write. Yeah? Output changes and so on. That's how you should be doing for your, for your milestone. I don't want you to simply give me the waveform. Ah, uh, hundred percent successful. Here is the waveform, and that's it. And who's going to interpret? You ask me to interpret whether it's right or wrong. So don't do like that, because I'm expecting for you when you do your milestone project, especially with the sequential milestone, all this thing. You you understand? You know that the circuit is working, 
and therefore you tell me. I want to see that you know how it works. So sometimes it may not be right, or maybe you didn't test enough to see all the possibility. Especially for right for the milestone four state editor, you have for example the input is D and N N. Now the first sample that you may do is you do the all the correct sequence D N N N. And show me the state. The state has to be going from S0, S1, S2, S3, and the output triggered. You have, you have to also show me another version of when it is wrong. For example, you do D, N, D, D, N, N, N until you get it right. Or we have with 2, 3. So that means your output waveform, you can show me at least maybe three sample output. For example, one is the right one, one if you don't give the right one, what happened? And you show me the process. When is it detected and why is it detected? And you show me the ages. For example, here I clearly show you the why is based on the negative ages. Negative ages only at the negative. You put a dotted line. But I will be able to do this by flipping this figure onto your we uh, into either PowerPoint or into Word, and then you do the editing right. Or you can even do it uh, cut and paste into paints and add the additional remark on your waveform. That's how you should be doing it. Yeah? Even I myself in the, in the short time, I'll do it and you have to do it. So that let's say your test your final is going to be very late, right? Uh, in I don't know June, maybe. Right. Now it's April. So by the time you're going back there, you check back to your work, you know how it works. And trust me, we have tested students many, many times that we do final exam from your milestone project, but not exactly it looks almost sometimes it looks exactly the same, except the input we give and it asks you to complete the waveform. And many students are unable to answer. Why? That's it. Because you do your diagram, you simulate, and then you, that's it. You don't really check how it works. As long as you can see the there are some changes, you assume that it's okay. Okay? So I want you to be clear on that. I want to see because now, until master four, so far you don't have hardware. So that means your reporting, I'm going to be very strict on how you show me that you understand how it works. Okay, your objective must be clear. Even if the master only have one objective, you can put two or three objectives based on what you're doing. For example, in master four, you have to do one hot method. Um, Binary method, binary encoding, and also the editor, the state machine editor. So when you compare the three methods, right, and you tell me, how do you find it? What is the pro and con between one method to the other method? Eh? So, is there any question you want to ask me before we sign out? Daniel? We have 44 here, Aina, Balkis. <coughs> you see, I know you always say no, then you ask me. Shafiq. <coughs> okay. Balkis, are you, are you the one named Long Balkis that always asking to join me on MV? You can stop recording now. Okay. So let's see. So how are you so far? Uh, we finish on our <coughs> lesson because although we have we still have time, I don't want to <coughs> I don't want to be too much because let's just <coughs> do it bit by bit because you have to do like long distance learning like this, right? Let me hear some voice. Huh? Where are you? You finished now? Yeah. Ah, this is Daniel, is it? Who is this? Just now? <laughs>